the way that the plane and Elevate OS will essentially optimize Joby to have this platform, not just this aircraft, uh, is really exciting. Talking EV tool here with Joby Aviation and Travis, the guys out of California. Great to have you here again and lots of news. 523 miles hydrogen flight, launch of the Elevate OS software and the acquisition of X-Wings, wow. So uh, yeah, a lot of exciting things happening here. Um, I think we've been building to this from the stock perspective, sure it's exciting, but just from the company perspective to see that we have a technology that obviously surprised a lot of people. The range is the, the big number. It's essentially 5Xing their, their usable range, which opens up you know, all sorts of possibilities. But moreover, it's really neat that essentially they said they were retiring this aircraft for future aviation technologies. And then immediately, unbeknownst to anyone, we're outfitting it with this hybrid hydrogen electric system and then just rolled it out of the garage and flew it for 500 miles. You know, there was no extended testing period because we knew that it was flying just a few months ago, strictly electric. So uh, really exciting. And I mean, that, that in and of itself is a, a new form of flight. We haven't really had hydrogen flight um, out, outside of H2 fly, which is obviously Joby's subsidiary that helps pull this off, but such an exciting time. And, you know, with X-Wing and autonomy, I think again, both hydrogen and autonomy further down the, the line for us, but, we're starting to see the foundation really solidifying into something that isn't just in the imagination. This is real. Where we go from here is, is truly exciting. Just uh, looking at the latest video from Lilium where they talk about the difference between inner city travel and intercity travel. So from this ultra short haul to only short haul, that there's compelling economics. So it's much more profitable to do travel between cities and obviously this range now of 841 kilometers, 523 miles, that definitely puts Joby into this space of also being able to compete in the connecting cities like Los Angeles to San Francisco should just be about in the range or Munich to uh, Zurich. And of course there, you already have these services in place today. So it is about having a, a different schedule, being able to uh, start or arrive uh, at a later time of day due to the noise footprint and have better economics of uh, passenger mile per seat costs than you have on the aeroplane because I flew Munich to Zurich once. It was $500 per ticket, 40-seater, 60-seater aircraft, Fokker or so, I don't remember the exact make. And of course, it only flies once per day. Now, if you break that down capacity-wise and you have a Joby that would fly 10 times per day, then that changes the dynamics and supply and demand. You make it more accessible for people to meet their travel schedule. Yes, I, I think you know the regional aspect was something that was a little bit out of, of Joby's range per se, but you know even then they had done the research through the Uber um, connection of most of the trips that people are taking are under 100 miles. So it was already in their sweet spot. And that's why I think, you know for me, it's really, this is Joby rolled out their second vehicle. You know This is the, the second model and we don't know much about it other than it flew five times as long as the other one. And, and so what I, I think is most exciting too, you know, as you talk about for the regional play, it opens up a possibility for people to live further away. And you know, if the economics of it are already start to become as cheap as maybe a high level Uber at this point, but once you have a fleet, you know, it does become the bus service that we've talked about previously. And when you can schedule it, you can optimize so that people will modify their schedule. If it only flies once a day, people have to completely change their behavior. But if you give them five options, wow, you're a lot more likely to, to grasp that market. So whether that's inside a city or people who just want to live a little bit further out because they want a bigger house, they, they want to have a family, um, they want some space. That's an opportunity that I think is, is pretty interesting for, for the regional play side of, of Joby. And maybe that's further down the line or not, but obviously it also shows Joby is an engineering Goliath. Nobody else is close to them. Archer needs to pull multiple rabbits out of the hat to show their engineering prowess in my mind if Joby is able to pull this off. Because if that aircraft could be retrofitted, meaning you can take an existing platform so it could roll off of the same assembly line and then you know maybe at, at some point near the end Dave diverts for the hydrogen components, but many things else are shared. I mean, it's just powering the electric system. You start to see that, wow, you could have these little mini facilities. So Marina, the clip of, of 25 per year, maybe that just is for the hydrogen side of things. And Dayton becomes 500 per year number is, is more for the electric side. And then maybe there's something in the Middle East as we talked about with you know, Saudi and UAE, but you could use the same 
manufacturing plant to build two different fleets that serve completely different markets, that's exciting, right? You don't have to ship it. You don't have to everything. Yeah. And I mean, we already commented about the, the acquisition of H2Fly in 2022. Now to see that Adobe is actually already putting this into some kind of business case and producing an actual aircraft that can fly. Apart from the H2 flight last week, we also have the new uh, Elevate OS software that was launched and the acquisition of X-Wing, which didn't really hit the news in the sense that the market took uh, great notice of that. The share price hardly moved at all, which I find quite amazing because uh, both news do increase the advantage of, of Joby and increase the chances of a successful time to market. Yes, I, I think, you know, something um, from the X-Wing side that I thought was really interesting, obviously they've already, you know, have a, a converted caravan air, a Cessna a Grand Caravan aircraft. They've already done, you know, hundreds of missions. Um, so that company is real. They're flying. The DOD is already using them. Uh, what I thought was the most fascinating piece that I found in the research is that they are also a part of the AFWorks and the AFRIL lab that we've previously touched on that's there based in Ohio as well, nearby to Joby. So I think that connection, they've been working together probably some, for, for, for quite some time, or, or at least even the talent between those teams potentially, that, that's just a guess. But I think that's the, probably the most exciting piece of that. And then for Elevate OS, from my time with Blade and actually operating an air taxi service, both here in Los Angeles um, and, and the East Coast in and around New York. The great part about Elevate OS is that that is built in to the aircraft and nothing like that exists now. Um, even you know companies like Blade or others that, are, that have their own proprietary systems, there's operators that they utilize that are running their aircraft and a lot of that's just done behind the scenes and is quite analog and manual. I mean, obviously they're using computer systems, but it's a, it's a lot of uh, manual work. So what I think, you know, Elevate OS adds, you know, small nuances and, and maybe Stein, you want to touch on it as the actual pilot here, but b the aircraft and the system, the app are all tracking, not just the diagnostics of the aircraft, but also for the pilot, their pilot hours, which is extremely important, but for safety and also just making sure that we follow the regulations, but things like that, that are so integrated, um, as we've spoken on, you know, some of the nuances that they have built into their seats where they're going to be able to do weight and balance because Elevate OS is plugged into the aircraft itself. All that's going to be known. They talked about as they're doing the charging, they're going to essentially just do small little bursts uh, as they load up these flights to keep the, the state of charge might drop a little bit per flight, but you kind of almost get back to even each time or, or close to it. But also in their charging system is all data ports. So you know that all that information again is just going to be coming and going. So the way that the plane and elevate OS will essentially optimize Joby to have this platform, not just this aircraft uh, is really exciting. And then moreover, they said that they're going to license it for other operators to use just for some of these other optimizations that they've made generally, plus the component that they have plugged into Uber to add in the transportation piece, which is actually quite hard, um, just as hard sometimes as getting people to and from their, their private aircraft. So yeah, Elevate OS is, I, I think, a sleeper. And man, if that can make money as software as a service, we already know what those margins um, look like. So again, very exciting uh, opportunities for Joby Head. Thank you for that color on um, Elevate OS there, Trevor. Do you think the software piece will also include predictive maintenance, kind of like what Tesla is doing with their with their fleet. Yes. So I think, you know, obviously in terms of battery conditioning and some of these other um, components of high operation and volume flight that they'll be needing, that that'll be a huge component of it. And also some of these other nuances, obviously this is still a new way to fly. So if there's any anomalies, as we see more, you know, weather that they're flying into, luckily Marina does have quite a bit of fog and weather challenges for them to have already been testing through that they would at least face here in the States. And then they've already talked about, they can handle high temperatures. So UAE to by. Um, but, but I think, you know, the maintenance piece, because the platform and the aircraft are all plugged together, you know, you're not just currently now, even in some of the most sophisticated jets, you have a warning light, but it's just on the dash for the pilots to deal with. Now it's something that could be the diagnostics could also be at the hangar or at HQ or whatever that looks like. And so they'll be able to do like Tesla over there updates and, and other things, presumably to help, you know, whether that's changing flight profiles or downloading flight information, new topography maps, detailed aerial maps, aeronautical maps, whatever that looks like, all that information will be able to, to go you know, directly to the aircraft um, and the pilot you know, as well. And Travis, uh, I guess also a huge increase in productivity when it comes to dispatching, because right now when you book a flight, you kind of have a travel agent or platform and that has nothing to do with what 
plane is then allocated uh, later on. So in this case, you're booking your seat on a, a certain aircraft, the physical seat as it is. Is, is that correct? Yes, and, and just some of this is using my experience of there is some physical limitations of just how you have to load aircraft and, and other things. But essentially, now Joby would also be able to, at the last minute, say that a passenger was going to be late. You know, they're going to miss the flight. And because the system is set up, they're going to have to pay some penalty and rebuy a, a really not great customer service experience. But if you already know exactly where they are because they're in your Uber that's connected to your system, well, maybe there's a flight that's 15 minutes later that they won't be late for. And then you just swap them out and you just took a terrible customer service experience, maybe lost the customer, all the marketing, et cetera. And operationally, you're able to do that cleanly because the pilot immediately knows that he has a different passenger the customer experience team knows a new passenger you have their name information blah 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 everything is done it's seamless and just taking away the friction that is something that you know obviously will lead to, to time savings and, and time is something that is the most valuable just coming back to x-wing what i found amazing is they already have 250 autonomous flights and 500 auto landings under their belt and if we look at uh, the channels like uh, mentor pilot best regards here I always enjoy watching that just how challenging landing is then 500 auto landings already successfully delivered is a huge achievement i had never heard about x-wing before so uh, how can it be that they so under the radar, even though it's quite an achievement in aviation? I think we can kind of look to, again, where they've coming from with the AFRIL and AFWORKS lab um, and the DOD. And what's most exciting about their technology is um, the Cessna Grand Caravan. I mean, anybody can, can look it up, but extremely popular aircraft. You know, it's robust aircraft, um, eight passengers, a couple pilots. You know, they are amphibious, so there are configurations that do have pontoons to land on water, which, again, an autonomous plane that could land on water and you know, use your imagination, really exciting from the DOD side, um, or, or at least exciting in a sense, that's a tool that you know that, that they could use. So I think X-Wing probably why most of it has been under the radar is because if it's already outfitting aircraft that currently exist that are robust, have, you know, maintenance schedules, histories, et cetera, and they're actually quite inexpensive, there's, I would guess, probably more than what has been published of those aircraft converted being used for something exciting times and we'll look forward to a, a great uh, h2 uh, 2024 with joby 523 miles are uh, traveled with hydrogen elevate os software getting ready to market and future growth with the acquisition of x-wing